So guys, today we are going to be taking a look at my top five slash runner up to uh, of my favorite EDC gear of this year. Now you guys know that I've tested and done a whole bunch of EDC updates, reviews on all sorts of EDC gear. So obviously I have quite a bit of selection to choose from and that kind of makes this cho choosing process a little bit harder. But as always guys, before we get into this, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more awesome Alaskan content just like this. So as per usual, before we get into this too much, uh, the runner up to this whole setup is actually a belt that I really, really enjoy. And I think belts don't really get enough airtime in the EDC community and stuff, but they are pretty awesome and some are more awesome than others. And of course, this isn't some nifty do-all kind of multi-tool uh, belt, but it is a really nice, very functional, and what I think really high quality and awesome belt overall. And of course, this belt here is the uh, Hank's belt Highland belt and uh, I've really enjoyed rocking this belt and really uh, It's a fun belt to run It looks really great and it can hold up a lot more than you suspect especially for being a thinner leather than most of your average high-quality heavy-duty leather belts So with the runner-up out of the way now Let's take a look at some of my overall favorite gear for this year that I started running for EDC so the first one, which is now frozen to this table a little bit, is the Exotac Nano Striker XL. And I know this one's been getting a lot of airtime in a lot of my videos. I've been covering this uh, little ferro rod, but I do actually really enjoy having it. And it's such a great little piece that I try and bring it up whenever I can because I really like having it. And it's, like I said, a really nice and really easy to run a piece of survival equipment that you can carry very conveniently around your neck and it makes a perfect EDC addition to being just more prepared overall and especially like I said now that we're in winter it's a little bit even now more important than ever to have the ability to start a fire. So the next part is a flashlight and what's because is another thing that's pretty important to have in the winter time in Alaska and just overall when it gets dark and this one is the Mech Army SPX 10 now I've been through a few flashlights this year as I'm sure some of you more dedicated and loyal followers will know that I've been through a handful of flashlights this year I started out the year with the Protac 2L then I went over to the Innova T2 the Innova XS and then back to the T2 and then back or not back but then to the SPX 10 and so I've had a handful of flashlights through my hands this year, but this one by and large for a wintertime setting is probably my favorite flashlight. Now I still have to go back to the Innova XS for summertime. I think that's one of the best flashlights to have because it has a very high output of over 120 lumens, but yet it's a very, very small single AAA uh, use and it's just a really great flashlight to have for a backup or just in a summertime setting where at least here in Alaska, I say summertime setting because here in our summers, it never actually really gets dark. So what I primarily use a flashlight in the summertime for when and if I use them at all is just like if I go into a dark place, because obviously things like caves or things like uh, crawl spaces or whatever are still dark. So there are dark spaces still in the winter or sorry, not the winter, but in the summer. And so it's still important in those those times to have something that can illuminate but um, for the most part it's not as important so in the winter time however you do want to make sure you have a nice bright flashlight and this SPX 10 by Mech Army really helps with that because once again it's over a thousand lumens it's very bright it's sometimes fun to just go walk in the dark and then just light up an entire street with this thing because it is stupid bright but anyways now let's move over to some of the knives and once again another one stuck to the table <laughs> uh, this is my first favorite and i'm going by the way from least favorite to most favorite things here but do keep in mind this is still really one of my favorite knives i really dig this thing and uh, it is the zt05 sorry 04 
or sorry, 0452 CF or carbon fiber. Can't get that name down today, but it's a 0452 carbon fiber CF. And I really, really have been enjoying this knife. It is a bigger blade. It's actually quite a long blade and long handle, of course, too. But it feels really great. And because the carbon fiber titanium and the slender blade profile, it actually is a very light blade for its size being considered. And this is an interesting knife because I've actually, for most people that don't know, I actually have had a ZT before, the 0566. And I really did not like the 0566 as a blade. I thought that at first I really liked the hinderer blade style, like in pictures. But when I actually got the hinderer blade style in hand, it actually turned out to be not one of my favorite blades. And overall the construction build and just everything that the ZT0566 was, I just did not end up liking. And I tried to get to like it and I liked the LMAX steel on it and it cut good. It was just fine as far as a knife goes. But as far as the actual thing goes, I just couldn't wrap my brain around liking it. I could not get myself to enjoy that 0566. So I ended up uh, just get it, giving it away. But that knife kind of left a semi-negative impression of ZT. So I wanted to get another ZT knife to hopefully see what ZT is about. And as far as it goes, there are, I will say, at least what I've seen from some other YouTubers, there are definitely some lemons out there as far as ZT knives go. And some of their steel treatment is a little bit questionable. And so it still remains to be seen how the overall steel and quality hold up like durability goes with this knife but so far I've actually really been liking it and the ball bearings I have taken this part and uh, reassembled it cleaned it up and just made it all nice and pretty and the ball bearings look very nice it flips very very smooth it flipped smooth out of the box with absolutely nothing on the ball bearings but I put some fluorinated grease on the ball bearings and ever since then you can actually this knife is so smooth I don't think I can get it on camera oh I can so <laughs> without too much wrist motion and actually I put a little bit of wrist motion there I didn't mean to but without any wrist motion you actually don't even have to use <clears throat> the ball detent on this thing it actually is so smooth that without any um without any detent on this thing you can actually flip it open so this thing is stupid smooth now that I've kind of played with it a little bit and uh, put some fluorinated grease in the ball bearings but uh, it's overall a really awesome knife and once again I really like that knife for just being an overall general EDC slash semi-tactical knife. It works really well. So now getting to some other knives and this one I can't deploy too many times because once it gets cold it kind of stops working out here outside but this is a Microtech Ultratech and this is in blue it's kind of like a teal color but it's the tri-grip pattern and this is a battle worn finish on it so this is an artificially kind of battle worn looking knife and so it just looks overall worn and just torn it kind of looks rugged and awesome and I really do like that about it but <clears throat> overall <clears throat> this knife is really awesome I do really love Ult Microtex for the most part and I really wanted an Ultratex for a long time so that's why this is in my top two of my five pieces <clears throat> this one by far has been a knife that I've wanted for a very long time that Microtech Ultratech and particularly in this tri-grip pattern because some people will say that the tri-grip <clears throat> not wrongfully but the tri-grip does kind of shred your pants but I do like the tri-grip uh, is very very grippy to hand and I like that a lot about it because the standard ultra Techs are very smooth and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that smooth um, finish but personally I like this really really grippy finish to it and so I really like that about it and <clears throat> with this knife overall I've really I've really enjoyed the build quality, how it slices, how it cuts, how it works, and it's an OTF. I really want an OTF, but most particularly a Microtech Ultratech for quite a few years now, and this has definitely been a kind of grail knife for me, and so now I have one. It's like, yay, <laughs> I'm really excited to have an Ultratech in the collection now, and uh, they're not super expensive knives like the Sabenza, but they are really awesome, and 
Once again, I like the UltraTech a lot more than the UTX85 because I like the size. I kind of think already the Microtech UltraTech is a little bit on the smaller side, so I don't want something that's even smaller than this. So I definitely like this size as far as it goes, but I will have a full review on this knife. I just really, really am enjoying this thing and I enjoy carrying it. Once again, um, OTFs are not legal everywhere and they aren't necessarily the most useful knife as far as utilitarianism goes, but they're really fun to have and I've always wanted an Ultratech. So now I got one and it's like sweet. Okay, last. <coughs> Okay, and last but certainly not least is the Glock 19. For everyday carry, I've been really enjoying this as well. This has been a nice mix up from the Glock 21 that I was carrying for several years, and uh, I've just really, I've, for a very long time, I actually really loved the ergonomics and the overall fit of the Glock 19 in my hand, especially ungloved, but even gloved, the fit in the hand is really perfect for me. And I feel like it has just enough grip without being a little bit too large. Like the Glock 21 for me is just that little bit too large for my hands. So for the Glock 19, it's just right there in that perfect sweet spot where it just has just enough but not too much and not too little. Like the Glock 26 I've held and the Glock 43 I've held all of them and they have just a little bit too little for me. It's not significantly less but it's just a little bit too little for me. So <clears throat> the 19 really fills that spot and it also holds 15 rounds in the magazine so it holds a good amount of rounds and it has a really good fitment for me and overall it's just been a real pleasure to carry the 19. I love the way it looks. I'm not to say it's much different from the 21, although this one is Cerakoted, so it's a little bit different looking, but overall this thing's been very fun to EDC, and I really enjoy carrying it. I've put a lot of rounds through it already, and the Cerakote finish is definitely wearing off just a little bit, and that's what I was going for. I wanted just this awesome kind of worn uh, battle-like kind of look to it, almost like the battle-worn Microtech. Uh, I kind of want it to look just a little bit like that, so it definitely has some slide wear on it from coming in and out of the holster a lot and of course being shot a lot. This thing was just out to the range yesterday, so this thing gets shot a lot and uh, it's a real pleasure to shoot as well, not just to carry. I love the recoil impulse of the 9mm. It's very controllable and easy to get multiple rounds off very fast. That's kind of the thing about the 45 ACP is it definitely, you if you get trained well like I am, you can get rounds off pretty fast but there's a lot of recoil to it so it takes quite a bit of learning curve whereas with the 9mm you can just get right into it and start letting off rounds accurately at a pretty good rate of fire so overall that is my top five everyday carry most memorable EDC gear for this year and I've really enjoyed carrying everything here or wearing everything here you guys see and it's just been really it's just been really fun and really enjoyable to spice up and diversify this edc and hopefully you guys will enjoy or enjoy some of this edc content that we're bringing out ashley and i are bringing out we try and keep it diversified mixed up and kind of fun so anyways guys that's all for now god bless and i'm out